I, I, a fool just let out around me. <laughs> uh, a little loud where I am from that. We just loaded in in Miami. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. But you, you know, you're surrounded by chaos going on around you quite a lot of your time. So I guess yeah. it's kind of normal for you, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's just not at all uh, on average. I'm going to turn off my video so you're not going to look up my nose the whole time, but I am here <laughs> excited to do the interview. In Miami, you enjoying the uh, the warmth? Yes, it's it's going to be a very nice, uh, you know, last last bit of, uh, you know, warmth before the, the cold, you know, especially Montreal is going to be very cold. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, very excited. Get ready, warm. get ready for uh, the drop in temperature, that's for sure. Yes. But, um, it's not that long since you're in Montreal. So do you get excited about coming back to places that you've been to so recently? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it's a really fun, um, you know, like thing to see the how it compares. You know, we, we get to see marginal growth in, in whatever ways. And so to go back to a city right after you've been there and be like, is there more or less people? And like, do people move differently or like, are we reaching different people? It, it's a very fun part of uh, touring. Yeah. So at least like, I, I assume you're going back to cities that you've been to quite regularly. Like you've been on the road, like pretty consistently the last couple of years. So have you, are you noticing that? Are you noticing the crowds kind of adjust and tweak as you go back? Yeah, definitely. It, it's, it's one of the coolest parts is, is being like, Oh, I think people are like, leaning this way or that way and they move differently than they used to and um it, it's very exciting and very fun to observe and, and kind of take note of yeah recently you put out this comp on your youtube channel from la which is it's immense and it's just like a whirlwind for 30 minutes basically people yeah kind of running around there's like pretty much no time where there's somebody not diving off the stage you're in the middle of it, looking like you've been hit by a truck, I have to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you've got the, the jacket on, and then the band's going for it. Like, that's obviously LA. Is that representative of what you're seeing on the road other places? Definitely. I get pretty beat up a lot of nights on tour. I, you know, I got uh, kicked in the nuts and then kicked in the teeth right afterwards, just, just the other night, and got tackled off the stage in Austin, and uh, we embrace the chaos. Not that it's uh, the ideal situation to be beat up by the audience, but <laughs> we we love the exchange of energy between the two. And that's what's been so fun about kind of curating our live show and trying to bring bands that also kind of uh, like harness it in a similar but different way. And, you know, like Pool Kids isn't getting beat up on stage every night, but they are making everyone jump up and down and go crazy. And Spiritual Cramp is just like such an amazing rock band. And yeah. it's just been fun to, to see it build into it. Like we want to build it to a boil, you know? And that, that was why we brought such amazing bands with us was that it was like, by the time we hit stage, everyone has primed the audience so well to just explode. So what was the thinking behind putting this, this show out just before you go on the road? Like, is that to encourage people to come or give an idea of what to expect or what, what was the thinking? Yeah. Yeah. It's propaganda. Uh, all, all media is propaganda and, and we embrace it and try to use it to, to kind of have our, our live shows specifically reflect the way that we think our live show should look. So we've, you know, always curated very specific live clips and we don't post other live clips because it's, it doesn't look like the show we want to make. And so people see that and they, have the expectation this is how i move at a military gun show and even past that you know during one of our songs we extended the bridge you know and i'm like i don't know if this is your first military gun show but we want you to do one thing is jump up and down and go crazy and, and move around like a weirdo and um and you know trying to we just want people to feel comfortable being weird and goofy like like i think that the cool guy uh bullshit it like doesn't serve anyone and it's not fun and it's not open hearted. And so we want to like open everyone up at our shows to just like be as insane as they want to be in a way that they can't be in their normal lives. Well you can definitely see that in that video. And I've seen you guys live. I know that's what it's like in real life too. So this concert that went out, it's about 30 minutes long. I think that's pretty much how you how long your sets are every night, right? No, no, we're playing for an hour. Are you playing longer now? 
Yeah, yeah, that, that, that video was from a support tour where we only could play 30. So we are at a point now where we're playing a lot closer to an hour, because which is they, fun because yeah, we get to play like with dynamics where, you know, one block of songs is about reflection and then another is about, you know, jumping around. And then we get to play with the ebb and flow of, of the energy of the audience of like, all right, everyone calm the fuck down right now. This, is, this one's a soft one. And then immediately after we hit them with a crazy one so that they had that little bit of rest to get their energy back. And then we, we give them the business again. Cool, man. Well, last time I spoke to you, which wasn't that long ago, it was last summer. Um, I mentioned that I, I was starting to hear your music on like mainstream radio, for want of a better word. I'd heard it on Apple Music and, and Zane Lowe had been playing it and a few other places, Radio One, stuff like that. It seems now that's becoming more and more of a common theme. Like, uh, how does it feel for your music to be kind of getting out there beyond the clubs and beyond, you know, the punk kids down the front? I mean, it feels, it feels insane. It, it's not something that I ever thought would be the case. Like, you know, I thought that us doing like the local club, that's like 300 tickets would have been the, 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 the peak of this band. I, I never thought that any of the rest of this stuff would happen. And, uh, you know, we've been seeing tweets about like, I turned on the radio and I heard military gun. And it's like, you know, that, that stuff that as a musician, you, you, you dream about as a child and you, you always hope that that's the case. But a, a long time ago, I let go of that idea that that would ever happen for me. So it, it's really cool to kind of experience it at a moment when more or less I was like, I, you know, I, I just feel grateful. I just, I just don't know. It never expected any of this and speaking of zane low you've been listed on this list of 24 for 24 which is basically the people that they think are gonna have an impact this year um the 24 artists now most of those are going to be pop and hip-hop and you know people making music in their bedroom you're one of maybe two or three actual bands on the list does, does stuff like that mean anything to you like is it significant for you to be on that list it does. I mean, it means a lot to be included by people who we respect their, their, what they do. And, um, you know, specifically Zane Lowe is, is, is a very thoughtful interviewer and someone who, you know, that that's like one of the dreams is like to, to, to talk to Zane Lowe. And I got to do it already in, you know, a very condensed amount of time, but, uh, it, yeah, we getting the acknowledgement of people we respect has been a really gratifying part. Cause you know, there's no shortage of people talking shit at the same time as, 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 you know, getting your accolades. And so at the end of the day, most people haven't created things that I enjoy or participate in. And so when it's someone who gives you props that is that you like actually enjoy what they do, it really does mean a lot. At this point, your album has been out for what, like seven or eight months now. It kind of feels Something like, like that. It feels like it's been around for a lot longer than that to me already because I've listened to it so much. For you, for you, it must feel like it's been years since that album came out. Are you, are you ready for the next chapter of Military Gun now? Yeah, I've been working hard on new songs. But at the same time, it, it, it's, it doesn't get old playing these songs because we dreamed for so long of playing these songs live and um, – being able to like, you know, do our first headliner where we're playing, we're playing 11 out of the 12 songs from the album. And uh, because of that, you know, we get to, we're experiencing the songs in a different way and seeing people experience them for the first time live because we're playing them for the first time live. And I don't know, it, it doesn't get old, but at the same time, we've been working so hard between tours with the little time that we have to write as much as possible. I just sent 11 demos to our label yesterday. So um you know it, it it it's certainly a lot of emphasis on the forward momentum and the, and the new music but but in no way are we growing tired of these songs we're, we're just so excited to be playing them every night what do, what do you think you learned from the first album cycle that you know the whole process of making an album and touring it what do you think that you learned from that process that's gonna take you into this next chapter with the new songs and the new cycle I learned how to sing better live. That was a huge part of it was like, you know, it was uh, a thing where the earlier stuff was so much more gruff vocally and, and, and less melodic. And, 
there's more room for for the errors to to be okay and and the more that we toured and the more that i needed to tighten up and be, develop as a vocalist was was an important space to figure out and so it's been really fun getting to a point where i have my my confidence and and feel good and 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 learning how to work a crowd and how to sequence these songs into a set list and uh you know on top of that you know through the recording process you learn so many things you learn about harmony and you learn about tone and and you figure out your sound through all that all the way through mixing and everything else so i don't know there, there's so many lessons learned that it's hard to pinpoint a singular one yeah did you also learn like where you where you want to take it like how you want to kind of develop your sound I mean, the whole thing about Military Gun is about writing out of intuition and interest and not censoring, you know, what seems like it could be something really outside of the Military Gun realm and instead just trying everything and throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. You know, like when we wrote See You Around, I think people initially thought that was a crazy song to do. And then, uh, you know, eventually it all uh, starts to make sense as the rest of the record, as you hear the rest of the record supporting it. And so it's about never shutting down an idea and instead just knowing that it all comes from anywhere. And I know, I know that your music taste is like super eclectic. We spoke about that before. Do you, do you think that your eclectic music taste is going to infiltrate into the band sound and maybe kind of expand the sound even more? Always. I mean, that's the whole goal is, is always that the expansiveness of the, uh, knowledge you know I, my, i'm i'm dedicated to finding new music constantly whether it be new artists or revisiting uh re classic records that i don't know yet it's all about you know there's not enough hours in the day or enough attention span to, to know all of it already so yeah it's about yeah. finding the, the next well that that really feeds you and and makes you feel great about music and, and excites you you know um and so through you know as as long as I'm doing that, I think it'll always infiltrate into Military Gun. And at the moments when I'm uninspired, I won't, you know, I won't touch it. So your lyrics are very personal a lot of the time. And obviously you have to go up on stage and sing these lyrics again and again every night. Do you do you ever like worry about oversharing or writing about things that you don't want to have to remember every night on stage? No, I mean, I, I mean, yes, I, I am concerned about oversharing, but at the same time, I, I've I've shared the amount that I have, and so it's about supporting those things and talking about the the content of the songs and trying to make that relate to people as it you know as as it unfolds every night, and not having it just be some meaningless party. It's you know, at the end of the day, I still want someone to walk away feeling some form of catharsis and and uh but ultimately you know fun first and foremost but then from there you hope they also have some emotional takeaway so when you're writing are you are you writing thinking about the listener or are you like completely just in your in your own head writing and then that kind of comes later L yeah listener is the absolute final person to be considered it's really just do i want to listen to this song on repeat and if I don't listen to the song and repeat, that I will never go back to it. Um, and so it's been fun in this demoing process, having the songs emerge where you're like, I listen to that song a little less than the others, which means it's not ready. It's not good enough. And um, usually uh, when I start considering the audience is about a, the day before the song releases and I start panicking, being like, I've ruined my life. People <laughs> hate this song. I've gone too far. Uh, it's all over. So you're on tour now. You're going to be in Montreal on the 17th. And how's the rest of the year looking for you? Are you is, are these new songs something that you're going to be focusing on soon? Uh, you're focusing on it every moment that we're not on tour. I was in the studio literally every day um, besides two days uh, from Christmas to uh, to leaving for this tour. And uh, yeah, but I mean, our, our schedule does not relent. So it's, it's about trying to get as much work done uh, while at home. So March and April are pretty free. We have like a documentary thing that we're going to be putting out. And so we're finishing that up. And uh, it's like, you know, a lot, we're always too many projects deep. And uh, it, it's, it's really fun, but it's also like, shit. I just, the, to me, songwriting is, is the task, you know, like 
there's the rest is amazing and i really appreciate the rest but the part that fuels me and like i'm obsessed with is writing the next song so being on tour can also be very frustrating because that song doesn't get to exist until we're home amazing well things are good right you're uh, you're enjoying the ride i'm on cloud nine right now i i, I uh I've historically had pretty poor mental health on tour and, and that has drastically changed um, on these last two tours we've done where we did Europe in the fall and we're doing 22 song sets and you know now we're doing 19 to 20 songs a night and um, I'm just having just a freaking blast up there. We have such a good crew of people around us and obviously such amazing uh, fans that are that are you know, they're, they're the reason this all works. Like without them showing up they're, they're you know, like we could be a great band by ourselves and, and, and it would, you know, you don't get anything outside of creating songs, but with the audience being so amazing and going crazy and making our shows entertaining in a way outside of ourselves, like it obviously it fuels things. And without that, we, you know, I don't know where we'd be. So it's a very, um, it's a very, very cool time to be a part of Military Gun, and, and, and I wake up every day literally just smiling uh, for this tour. It's, it's been, it sounds so corny and fake, but I'm just, it literally is like, uh, it's, just, it's been really fun. And the bands we have with us are just so incredible. The first time I saw you was with Touche Amore in, um, in Montreal, which yes. isn't so long ago, but it seems like things have just gone like a, a constant trajectory since then. And uh, it's really nice to see as as a fan and a viewer from the outside. It's just really nice to see that things are happening for you, and I hope they continue to happen for you. Um, yeah, and just enjoy everything that's coming, man. Thank you so much. It means a lot to hear, and we'll we'll see you in Montreal. Yeah, thanks. You take care, and thanks for your thanks time. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.